Marabunta. Soldier rats. Billions and billions of them on the march. As all of you know, there have been some bushfires in Australia since December which have burnt out an area roughly the size of Italy. I'm going to post a link in the comments section of this video so that if people want to donate, there'll be a link to a number of different charities that are doing good work to help the people who have been left homeless and to help the animals who have been left homeless by these fires. If you can donate anything, that'd be great. And anyway, let's get on with the video. With some famous actors, their earlier, more obscure roles are the most interesting ones. The movies they starred in before they had the power to change scripts to suit their egos show us the road not travelled in their later careers. People know Charlton Heston for a few things. He played Moses, he played Ben-Hur, he played a histrionic whistleblower in Soylent Green. Soylent Green is people! And he played dangerous games with guns and politics. From my cold, dead hands. But back in the 1950s, he was an up-and-coming actor, a contract star with Paramount Studios. In 1954, he made two movies for the studio, both adventure films set in South America. And these movies became better known for the being shown on television in later years than they ever were for their initial theatrical runs. The characters he played are similar in their athletic physicality, but very different in their approaches to women. But before I get to that, please like and subscribe this video if you're enjoying it, and I will be posting more videos every week. Let's look at the movies themselves. The Naked Jungle is a classic of 1950s adventure cinema. It was produced by George Pal, the man who gave us some of the best science fiction movies of the 50s and 60s. It was directed by Byron Haskin, who also directed Pell's version of War of the Worlds in 1953, based on Carl Stevenson's 1937 short story, Leningen vs. the Ants. This movie is set in the Amazon jungle in 1901. Christopher Leningen, played by Heston, meets his male order bride, Joanna, played by Eleanor Parker, for the first time. Leningen has spent 15 years carving his cocoa plantation out of the jungle, starting when he was just 19 years old. He literally drained the swamp to create his empire. The indigenous workers are loyal to him, and his best friend is the district commissioner, played by William Conrad. The first two of the three acts of this movie are about Leningen and Joanna. He's stiff and formal and abrupt with her, Line engine, madam. I'll be right out. And that formality turns to anger when he finds out that she was previously married and was a widow. Eventually, the reason for his anger is revealed. Leningen is a virgin. In his autobiography, In the Arena, published in 1995, Charlton Heston strenuously denied that Leningen was a virgin. But that can be seen as an act of protecting his public persona, something which Heston did often. The first two acts in the Naked Jungle are about Leningen and Joanna falling in love after the problems between them are discovered and explored and it's also about how Joanna is on a steep learning curve about living in the Amazonian jungle. Throughout these first two acts the commissioner hints at something being wrong on the Rio Negro near the plantation. It's only as the third act begins that we and the characters find out what that wrongness is. Arabunta. Billions of soldier ants are heading for Leningen's plantation, eating everything organic in their path. Leningen decides to stay and stop them, and Joanna stays with him. And that's when Leningen's inexperience with women ends, and we get to the cool stuff. Fighting billions and billions of ants. That's what we're here for. Leningen fights the ants with trenches, fire, and gutsy determination before finding a way eventually to defeat them. Eleanor Parker, who played Joanna, was a superb actor, underestimated throughout her career. She did get an Oscar nomination for one of the best and toughest prison dramas ever, Caged, in 1950. And in Scaramouche in 1952, her character Lenore was great fun. She never really got the role she deserved after Caged, but she did well with the role she was given. So let's talk about the second movie now. It doesn't even rate a mention in Heston's autobiography. In Secret of the Incas, we get the Peruvian Andes instead of the Amazonian jungle. 
And this one Heston plays Harry Steele, the OG Indiana Jones. Just check out the look on him. Fedora, jacket, satchel, pistol, the shaft of light in the map room showing where the treasure is hidden. Indiana Jones owes a lot to Harry Steele. Harry works as a tour guide in Cusco, Peru, while looking for leads to the location of the sunburst, a large gem-encrusted golden disc. Harry also gets money on the side by sleeping with female tourists. Basically, and meaning no pejorative intent at all towards sex workers, Harry's a sex worker. First we see him with Miss Morris, played by future Happy Day star Marion Ross. It's been very enjoyable. I've enjoyed the trip. Most men don't enjoy taking money from women. That's the best kind. It's the hardest to get. It always smells so good. We then see Glenda Farrell as Mrs. Winston, who knows the score and has at least one assignation with Harry. Is guiding people fun? That depends where they want to go. I wouldn't want to miss anything. I'll see what I can do. Until her studly tour guide meets Elena, a stateless refugee played by Nicole Mori, who hires him to help her get into Mexico and the United States in spite of the fact that she doesn't have papers. Alina is clearly the woman who's going to set Harry straight, although she admits that as a stateless person travelling in South America, she's had to take a career path not entirely unlike Harry's. The necessary bad guy in this movie has the prosaic name of Ed Morgan, played by Thomas Mitchell. Ed and Harry have the best dialogue in the movie, full of threat and menace, delivered with a casualness that underlines the danger. Don't get rough, that's all. I can't move fast myself, but I got friends who move fast. You'll need them. Just for a moment, let's give Thomas Mitchell some props. He was a fine actor and a director and a screenwriter, and he was the first male actor to win the Triple Crown of Acting, an Oscar, an Emmy, and a Tony. Only Helen Hayes beat him to the punch. If you see a movie with Thomas Mitchell in it, you're in for a treat. The guy was great. In Secret of the Incas, Ed Morgan is Harry Steele 20 years in the future if he doesn't change his ways. He's a ruthless, egotistical, greedy ghost of Christmas yet to come. There's some subtly deep writing in this movie and I love it. We also get a couple of interesting but underwritten Peruvian First Nations people in the movie. Like a Chutek played by a white expatriate Australian actor, Michael Pate. And Cory Ticker, a priestess played by the singing phenomenon known as Yuma Sumac. Peruvian-born Sumac had a six-octave vocal range. YouTube has a lot of her songs and their eerie, alien-sounding tracks, much beloved by lounge and exotica music fans like me. You should check out Secret of the Incas as well, not only for the sex work stuff, but for seeing one of the influences on the Indiana Jones series, seeing what entertainment was like in the 1950s, and seeing how cool B pictures could be. B pictures from the 1930s to the 2020s are often more entertaining than the careful, non risk taking A pictures. There's less money at stake, so the creative people are permitted to get experimental. And as with every other part of life, the really cool stuff is always at the fringe of things, it's never where everyone else is looking. You should check out more bee pictures and have a great time with them and definitely see The Naked Jungle and Secret of the Incas. That's it for this time around. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be back next week with more movie-related stuff. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Watch good movies, watch bad movies. Donate to the Bushfire Charities if you're able to. I'll be back next week with more stuff. Catch you then.